Tranquility du Jour, December 3rd, 2018. Hello there, this is Kimberly Wilson, and welcome to the 435th edition of Tranquility du Jour. Today I am chatting with Mabel, who just wrote this amazing book, The Gift of Calligraphy, a modern approach to hand lettering with 25 projects to give and to keep. It's an adorable book. Adorable. So we're going to chat about how to get started with calligraphy, what tools are helpful, and various projects that would make wonderful holiday gifts. Now, before we dive in, I wanted to share a few things. First of all, thank you so much for your feedback on the Paris podcast. If you have any additional questions, because I realized after I recorded it, I was like, oh, there's this and this and this and this that I'd like to share. So if you had any additional questions or you had any additional suggestions for a Tranquility Du Jour 2019 offering, please don't hesitate to reach out. Kimberly at KimberlyWilson.com. I always love hearing from you. And also, if you're new to Tranquility Du Jour, reminder in the show notes, which can be found at KimberlyWilson.com slash 435, you'll find a link where you can learn more here all about Tranquility Du Jour. Also, you can sign up for bi-weekly every other week, love notes, and it gives you access to a library filled with all sorts of tranquil treasures. Also, Those of you who are local, December 31st and January 1st, I'm doing some fun little welcoming in the New Year events and would love to have you. The details are all on my website and, of course, in the show notes. Also, save the date. January 6th is our next Tranquility Du Jour Live, which is a free one-hour gathering where we talk about how to bring tranquility into this brand new season. Also, those of you who are local, I have a writing salon happening in D.C. on January 12th and a four-week tranquility salon. You can read all about that in the show notes, and that starts January 13th, and there are two spots left. Now, if you would like to get away from the cold, cold, cold and join me in the tropics of Costa Rica, there are still spots available for February 16th through the 23rd. So that means you get a week away in the tropics. And we only have to take four days off work if you get President's Day off, which many people do. And then last is Tranquility in Tuscany. There's eight spots left for this, and that's happening in July. So all this information can be found over in the show notes, again, at KimberlyWilson.com slash 435. So you'll be hearing from me a bit more often in December as I have lots of wonderful podcasts that I have recorded and am eager to share. And of course, lots on the horizon in 2019. So you may just get a new podcast every Monday in December. So stay tuned and thank you as always for being here. So artist and calligrapher Mabel Emasa Stuckles finds beauty in imperfection, a widely acclaimed and distinctly modern approach to calligraphy. With over 10 years of experience, Maybell has been commissioned for bespoke, wedding invitations, letterpress stationery, and editorial features, exhibiting her elegant and playful signature style for a range of clients. Drawing inspiration from botanical engravings, vintage alphabet specimens, and her numerous travels abroad, she's been known to journey to Paris for just the right calligraphy nib. Her love of ephemera, and Faraway Places inspired a collaboration with Chronicle Books. She developed Calligraphy in the 21st Century, a popular San Francisco workshop booked months in advance as a way to share her passion with the creative community. This year, she offers a course in some of her favorite cities, New York, L.A., Portland, Santa Barbara, and Sydney, Australia. Raised in Hawaii, she lives in the San Francisco Bay Area with her husband and twins. Welcome, Maybelle. Hello. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh. Thank you for writing this gorgeous book, The Gift of Calligraphy, A Modern Approach to Hand Lettering with 25 Projects to Give and to Keep. This is a stunning book. Thank you so much. So tell us about calligraphy, its kind of relevance in your life and how you got started in it, your journey into it. Um, I wasn't a calligrapher for a long time, but um, I 
I studied graphic design in college, and I didn't take the traditional path that a normal design student would, would with um, by entering, you know, um, a field such as advertising or graphic design. I um, I got a job as a flight attendant by pure accident. I had accompanied a friend and um, ended up getting the job. Um, so I was flying on September 11th when um, when all of the attacks, uh, the, the terrorist attacks happened. And shortly after that, um, that was a terrifying experience, but shortly after that, I was furloughed from my job. And so that allowed me time to explore my my background in design. And I didn't know what I was going to do because, you know, I'd been flying for all these years and um, not really had much experience in the design world. So my husband, that Christmas, he gave me um, calligraphy lessons. And I, I didn't really know much about calligraphy. I just I just knew that I wasn't really interested in traditional forms of calligraphy. And the style that I ended up learning um, was with a woman named Lauren McIntosh, and she teaches this sort of style based on um, her own handwriting. And so I, I really loved that approach. I loved that it was imperfect. I loved that it was um, using a new tool, but for some reason, just the practice alone was very meditative, and I would just practice and practice and practice. And I have to say that I wasn't really very good at it <laughs> in the beginning. And then and we're getting married, and I would, you know, volunteer to design their invitations and add calligraphy to it. And some people, you know, politely declined. But um, after that, it it sort of stuck with me. Yeah. Well, you know, I love what you say about um, kind of being a beginner, and you know that you weren't very good at it. Because I tell you, I've taken a calligraphy class, a brush hand lettering class, and I've only practiced a few times. I must confess. But I still, I'm like, this is so freaking hard. And so you talk, you know, in the book about the beauty of being a beginner. And can you help people like me, fellow listeners, um, find the beauty of that when they're struggling and they see all these beautiful, you know, cards and, um, you know, notes and, uh, you know, all sorts of gorgeous things that people are making when we're like, oh, I can never remember that the downstroke is heavy and the upstroke is light. <laughs> Yeah, so um, sometimes when I have students in my workshops, for instance, that they're so hard on themselves and they don't realize they've only been practicing for maybe an hour. And um, I sort of miss those early days with, the, you know, those quirky marks. And, um, uh, you know, I also, they, they, they don't realize that it does take um, a few more times to get where um, someone would be as a, you know, maybe quote unquote professional and it, it's all you know relative to, to what you want to do with calligraphy if you want to you know design invitations or if you just want to have it be part of your everyday something that you do creative every day um everyone is so hard on themselves even I am still that way to this day where I'll write a letter and you know I sort of just say you know what that's that's how it's going to be <laughs> I have to just let it go <laughs> So we do get better? <laughs> is there hope? <laughs> <laughs> with, with practice. And, you know, better is also, again, relative. Like, you know, it's like when you play the piano, for instance, you don't necessarily need to be a concert pianist to enjoy, you know, playing the piano. And um, it's, it's like that with anything you do. And with um, social media these days, people want to be able to post something that, you know, would get lots of likes. And I think um, I think they don't realize that the people who are, um, you know, getting good at it have also practiced more than 10,000 hours in order to get there. Well, let me ask you this. So how long would you say it took you to be like, huh, I kind of like this? Um, <coughs> well, <laughs> for me, um, I think it was maybe six, maybe six months. Okay, that's that's, that's where, helpful. Where I sort of, I sort of said, "Hey, you know, why don't I start do, make, doing this as a career?" And um, you know, friends were getting married, and they said, "Oh, I won't charge you. I just want to practice." And um, so, some friends allowed me to, and eventually, I had, you know, maybe six or seven in, invitations in a, that I put into a portfolio. 
And I don't know what came over me, but I decided I was going to send my work to, to at the time, a magazine, not just any magazine. It was Martha Stewart Wedding. Right. Yeah. Not just like some little magazine. <laughs> <laughs> no. Back then, you know, blogs weren't really a thing. And um, there was no, you know, there was no Instagram, no Facebook. So people would actually send their work to be published. And um, that's how I got, I was, you know, discovered. You know, what you have too in your book that I really enjoy and appreciate is on page 11, what inspires me. So can you tell us a little bit about what inspires you? I guess everyone, you know, when, whenever I get asked that question, it changes from day to day. Um, when I drop off my kids at school, they, they go to school in the forest. And so just walking or just driving through this forest to um, drop them off at school, just to me, just looking at nature um, uh, sort of inspires me. And, and I'm always looking at things and I'll, I'll go with friends in certain places and, and they'll say, wow, I never looked at it that way before. It's always interesting about to, to see things through your eyes because We'll have tea, for instance, and I'll notice the, the packaging of the the tea, you know, tea bag, or um, it's just anything and everything. It's just something of, that I'm drawn to. I don't, I, I can't quite explain it, but I have a quirky eye for these things. Um, and so you'll see throughout my book, I have a collection of things that have just caught my eye, and I just gravitate towards. And so we sprinkled all of these kinds of things throughout the book. I'm going to read a piece from this page that I thought was just really fun as a good reminder to each of us. And it says, always observe the world around you. Ask yourself questions and challenge yourself. What makes you you? What is your story? Look at your past work and reinvent it. Never tell yourself that you are not creative. The very fact that you're reading this book means that you are creative. Look for things that inspire you, and before you know it, the sum of those parts, the textures, colors, patterns, and general vibe of the things you're drawn to will start to help you define your own unique creative vision. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly written. Well done. Now, you have a chapter, chapter two, right, on getting started, okay? And you discuss the elements, all sorts of it, from mindset to workspace to all the different tools. So can you tell us what is needed to get started, starting with the mindset? So it's, it's just, you have to be focused. You can't be distracted when you do it. And I, I am very guilty of this myself. Sometimes I will listen to a podcast or I'll listen to news in the background and I'm actually supposed to be addressing an envelope and I'll make a mistake because I, I was, you know, um, something else caught my eye or sorry, caught my, caught my attention. And um, so if you're not focused on what you're doing in that moment, you, you'll, you're, you're not, you're not um, I guess, focused enough to be writing with a pen and ink. Um, and also um, in talking about, you know, this mindset, something that creates calm um, and focus helps create, you know, work that's fluid and I guess essential to to what you need to work, work on. And what about your workspace? Like you mentioned the importance, of course, of natural light, which is so important. But what else is, in, is helpful in setting up our workspace? Well, you don't really need much in order to start with calligraphy. Um, if you don't have a defined workspace, you can just use your kitchen table. All you need is a pen, you know. If you want to write a card, just a pen and paper and the bottle of ink. Um, a lot of people think you might need, you know, the perfect, the perfect this or the perfect that. Or um, I think it's I do that to myself too. I, it's just an excuse not to create the work. Um, you'll notice that if even if you're jotting down a quick list of things you need to buy at the store when you're you're there later, um, that's that's also being creative and. Um, you you just need very little to um, to create with calligraphy. So you know you have a list of seventeen different tools, right? And um, and I'm sure some of these uh, you know are optional, of course, right? Because as you said, we need ink. Yeah, these <laughs> we are just need the tools pen. that I happen to have. Yeah. yeah. So 
Um, these are just the tools that I happen to have on hand that I, I, you know, some people might say, what is that? And what is this? Do I need this? And they're just random tools that I collected since I'm always looking for things um, at flea markets. I'll, I just ended up with a bunch of things. And um, so you don't have to have all of these things, but if you want to be able to take on, you know, special work where um, you, you might be needing to trace over or, um, you know, letter forms that you've sketched out onto final pen, pen and paper. Um, these are the tools that I, I just happen to have. And with pens, you know, what would you recommend on how we get started? Like, is there a particular pen that you're like, this is my go-to for beginners? Yes. Yeah, so uh, when I started teaching the workshops, I realized that the pen that I learned with, which is shown somewhere throughout the book, is a very thin pen. It's a, it's a mapping pen, and it's not really that easy for beginners to hold. And so, as I started teaching, I realized that you know the normal um, I say normal, but the the usual grip that people had um, was um, lent more towards um, this pen that I have. It's it, just a straight pen holder with a Japanese nib. That is um, called a Nikoji. It's actually used for um, drawing comics in Japan, these manga comics. So that is the, the pen that I, I tend to use for my workshops because it's easy for left-handed and right-handed people to, to learn with. Do you have a favorite ink that you're like, okay, this is a good one for beginners. It's not like a massive investment, but it, you know, it's because are there, there's waterproof inks, right? Yeah. So the ink that I like, to use it's just basically sumi ink it's used in um it's it's used for actually japanese and chinese calligraphy with the brush but i i happen to like it how it works with the, the nikoji um nib and um smooth paper is ideal and you know question for you too about the pens and kind of like the nibs can you uh, cause what, you know, one of the things in my brush hand lettering class, you know, we just worked with like a pen that had the felt tip, you know, that was like thin and, you, you know, can you start with that kind of more like a, a, a brush marker? So the style that I create is sort of, it's, um, the best way to describe it is it's using a pointed pen, which is a pointed nib. Um, and this allows a flexible, thin, and thick line to, um, that you wouldn't be able to get with a felt pen, for instance, because felt pens um, don't have the same, I guess, varied, um, flexible, <laughs> like the way the, the metal flexes, if that uh, makes sense. I see. Yeah, even though you can get one that is, you know, thin and thick to use for brush hand mm -hmm. lettering, it's not quite yeah, it's thin enough for the yeah, the okay. same goes with um, with fountain pens, for instance. Some fountain pens don't have that same. There are a few, um, such as the Namiki, but these are quite expensive. They're you know, at least $100, if not more, for these type of um, fountain pens. So, um, you know, the, the regular Nikoji nib is probably a $2, and the straight pen holder is another $2. So you don't really need much to start. Okay, that's helpful. Yeah, because, you know, I think sometimes whenever we get excited about some new craft or, um, you know, technique or creative practice, we're like, oh, I have to get all these supplies, right? And you're saying no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes for me, it's like, um, it's like an excuse to go shopping, maybe. I totally. Totally. Oh, I might need this. All that. Yeah, this is good. This is going to help me. This is totally going to do oh, this this book or this yeah this product um well in you know chapter three which i think is the important piece that you have emphasized since the beginning of our interview is practice 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 so can you tell us a little bit and i know it's hard because you're describing it verbally versus like showing it visually but what are kind of the practice basics that you would recommend our listeners get started with so um before you mean um, before forming the letters, just get, get used to making marks on the paper. Um, and you might want to just back up a few um, in my book, back back up to the making a mark section in chapter two. 
And this dipping of the pen and just making, creating strokes and just seeing how the pen works, I think is crucial to allowing you to see how this, this technique works. It's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of dipping, a lot of um, cleaning your nib. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, how do I know when to, to dip my pen again? And, and that's just, it comes automatically after a while. Um, I just do it, you know, um, spontaneously as I'm creating. I don't, I don't know how many sentences I can write. I don't know how many strokes I can create until the next time you have to dip the pen. And um, it just all, all just comes, comes naturally. So um, I think that is key. And there are warm-up exercises that will help you later um, to form your letters. And this allows you to play with, um, you know, thick and thin strokes. And I think it's here on page... Um, uh, Thir- page 34 of the book, 34, yeah. the warm-up strokes. Yeah. Yes. All of those those um, will help you um, in forming the letters. Yeah, this is so familiar. And um, listeners, you know, what it is really, the making a mark that she's talking about, it's like just going from top to bottom, you know, making like vertical lines and, um, you know, squiggles to be like, okay, when I go up, I go thinner. Whenever I go down, I go thicker. And, you know, it is it's such a helpful starting point rather than starting with the alphabet. And same with the warm-up strokes, super helpful. And, you know, what I love about the alphabet is whenever um, we can practice on translucent paper, you know, so underneath it, we've got, like, nicely written alphabet, and then we kind of practice tracing over it. In this chapter, um, I go through the, the strokes that are comfortable for me, but if you find that, you know, say there's certain letters that are trickier than others, if you, for instance, letter B, um, B is formed with a compound curve that is like a downward stroke and then it goes up and then another loop up. This is not a, nor- a natural um, movement for someone who is just starting. So if there's another way that you can find to create the B, you don't have to do it in the way that I do, but I, I um, you know, I don't think there are any wrong answers, it's just whatever you discover. Yeah, no, I think that's a great reminder, right? Because some of some of them, like a K for Kimberly is usually fairly complicated, I find. And so yeah, it's like invent your own, you know, but it is great to to work off of uh, examples, you know, from other people such as yourself. Now, one of the things you have that I really love is the experimenting with colors and materials. So can you talk a little bit about experimenting with colors because it does it just makes it pop so much this was one of my favorite chapters to work on and um it's just overwhelming once you incorporate color um sometimes you know as a beginner i didn't know um what kind of ink to start with i I was just buying pre pre pre-mixed um ink at the store acrylic based pre-mixed ink and um, I had no idea that you could even mix your own color. And I go through explanation um, on how to mix your own gouache, for instance, how to work with watercolors to add color, how color can convey um, something quirky or optimistic and playful just by changing the ink um, and paper combination by choosing a colorful hot pink, for instance. And... Um, for colors that are more subdued and earthy, um, you can use like a natural um, pigment that you can mix with water and um, gum arabic to create, you know, sort of muted, muted tones. And if you wanted to get started kind of playing with color, what would you say is the kind of gateway into working with color? You can start with the pre-mixed colors. Um, let's see here. Like you can actually dip your a brush into um, a watercolor pen, for instance, and you can paint that onto the nib. It's a little bit more cumbersome than dipping into a bottle of ink. But if you just wanted to play with um, color that way and see how how that would work with your nib, you could do it. Do that. Um, I um, I you know you can do what I did with, by just buying already mixed ink, and you'll know. Um, that it will work 
with your um, nib, but then you're just limited to to whatever's um, available in that at that store with um, the color. So I um, I talk about mixing gouache, and the the reason why you would want to mix gouache is if there are you know there is a color that you you really want to work with that doesn't exist. It's all done by trial and error. And you just keep mixing and testing. It's a it's a long process, but you, you just keep testing until you actually achieve the color that you had in mind. I love gouache. I never okay, yeah, this is it's a great idea of incorporating. It's such a beautiful um uh kind of technique or or finished product, you know, working with gouache. Yeah, so fun. And, you know, one other piece that's really fabulous about your book is you have 20 fr- 25 projects and have laid out on how to do it from watercolor place cards to um, elevated envelopes, brush lettering, your tote bag, gift wrapping with calligraphy. I mean, like, so fun. So can you talk a little bit about maybe or talk us through maybe a couple of your favorite projects that are good for beginners? Wow. Um, well, one way to get started um, and get a lot of practice is through the, you know, addressing envelopes. And that is, you know, uh, there, I think there's a spread where I just chose any and every co- combination you could think of when, um, if, you, if you wanted to use a brush, if it's something quick, um, using metallic ink, using labels, vintage labels are always fun. Um, it's something that just, you know, you know, make little bright somebody's day just by receiving something like that in the mail, even if it's not a special invitation. Maybe it's just a, hey, how are you doing, thinking of you kind of card. I think um, envelopes are, you can never um, be too crazy with. <laughs> yeah, you kind of can't go wrong, right? No. The other one that I think is super fun that I loved was Greetings with Gratitude. You know, like putting yes. these beautiful little calligraphy notes into um, vellum envelopes. So sweet. For the cards, um, the Greetings with Gratitude, the main project in there was, you know, what to do with your practice sheets. And on the page, I wrote thank you over and over and over. You could write thank you in different languages and then, you know, trim, trim these little pieces to create a many thanks card for someone. You know, it's like really showing, you know, if someone's gone above and beyond, this is, you know, this way, um, it's really heartfelt. And you get your practice in too. Heart, heartfelt greeting with extra practice for you. Oh, I love that. I hadn't thought of that. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, super cute. I, I really, I liked the examples in here. And, you know, listeners, I mean, the great thing is, as she said, right, it's practicing and you know she it looks like you practice on a vellum sheet of paper is that correct yes mm-hmm. and then cut them up and then and then put them into little vellum envelopes which is just absolutely adorable so imagine getting a thank you note that has like a little vellum envelope stuffed with thank you merci gracias you know all sorts of sweet little notes about gratitude that's a great idea um also in this chapter i've turned in any mistakes that i've made into wrapping paper. Um, if you go to the the gift wrap calligraphy project, I show you know how you can use your practice sheets to create a belly band around a gift. But also in that same um, same section, there is a uh, many different ways to use your practice sheets or you know sheets that were just you were testing color on. Um, to create into a wrapping paper. And this is wrapping paper that you cannot find at any store. Right. Super personalized. And recycled. And recycled. <laughs> I love that. Yes, reclaimed the whole shebang. And you know what's great too is as we think about, right, the upcoming holidays, you know, all these cute ideas with regard to miniature charms and labels and tags. Um, you know, like, can you imagine getting um, a gift with a cute little calligraphy tag, you know, tied around the bag? I mean, just darling. Thank you. And a yes, great- I think any and every, yeah, any and every uh, one of these projects could easily, easily made into gifts. Yeah, and it's, you know, a great place to start, right? Like a small thing that says someone's name, or as you mentioned, an envelope versus like, you know, a huge, huge project, like a tote bag. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you know, one other question I had for you was how do you encourage us to find our own personal style? So you kind of said that you took the standard calligraphy and you know, kind of created your own look with it. Oh my gosh. Um, yes. Yeah, so this, um, so when I, when I meet my own style, I, it's just, um, gosh, I like to create for friends, something that I would like to receive. And in doing so, I, I take things, for instance, like a wooden parcel. And this was inspiration from something that I found at a flea market. So you never know where inspiration is going to strike you. And you say, oh, I'd like to use that for you know, a special gift for so-and-so later on. Um, just always looking and being open to trying new ideas. Is um, when I created the the brush lettering bag, I didn't know it was going. It, it still has this beginner look to it, but um, I, I thought I'd write my favorite destinations, and um, you know, they all kind of look good together. I mean, they might not be the same destination that everyone else um, has, likes, but they all look kind of good together to me as um, written on the bag. Um, and things like like the signs, the wooden signs. Um, I wanted to make one for my kids because it's a reminder, brush your teeth or wash your hands, you know, and, and do it in a stylish way, not, um, not just um, like on a post-it. <laughs> right, right. I like to take it one, one more step above. Um, I don't know. I just love um, making it different. But um, when you say it's you, um, it's so hard for me to describe because I don't know, I, I just taking something and for me, um, the challenge is like taking something that you love and an idea and then turning it into a different use. It's sort of um, what I like to do. For instance, in the message, message in the bottle, for instance, um, these were used for watch parts, but I like to turn them into um, little notes or special you know, like a memento, the, the gift itself is the, the recycled vial. Yeah, so, so cute. These are great, great um, gift ideas, practice ideas, and, you know, different ways to express your creativity in it with your personal style, right? It's, um, you know, bringing it forth. I love the brush your teeth and calligraphy. It's like, who wouldn't be inspired to do so? Yeah. So, my um, last question for you, Maybell, is around the idea of the name of this podcast is Tranquility Du Jour. So I'm curious for you, how do you find tranquility in your everyday? Wow. Um, tranquility is so easy. To, it just goes hand in hand with calligraphy. Uh, whenever I'm feeling sort of stressed out or if, if I would just want my kids um, to do something calm, for instance, um, Gosh, this summer I have twins, and I threw a birthday party for I have boy girl twins, so ten boys and ten girls were at my house, and they went a little crazy with the water balloons a little early, and so I had them all do a a calm activity. I said we're going to do calm cursive words, <laughs> and I'm going to have you write calm words A to Z, um, kind words. Um, in, in your cursive just to calm down and, and all the kids it just automatically there was a quiet moment so for me it calms me and then when I, when things go crazy I, I you know have my kids do it too. That's a great idea. Yeah because I it was, would um, It was funny. Yeah, yeah it is funny and you know because it is it's, it, it is one of those things that you know it does take so much focus and concentration and you know, and it's fun and it's great to have the kind of hand-eye coordination and the whole thing going. So I love that that's your form of tranquility. Yeah. So for kids, if you want to incorporate, you know, you know, teach them, they, they get a big kick out of, um, you know, the way they used to do it, like when they wrote the Declaration of Independence. Um, so I, in the, in the book, there's a project to create with kids and it's um, called a calligraphy, a calligraphy kit for kids is the 
um, what I give as um, birthday gifts for um, friends who are having birthdays. And it's really easy to do. You just take a, a turkey feather or um, something from the craft store. You can find it when, when you're hiking out in nature. But if you just cut it on an angle and create a slit, if the kids dipped it into um, ink, uh, walnut ink, they, they can sort of emulate um, what you're doing and it gets them interested and it will keep this art form alive. Yes, yes, beautiful. Great reminder. Thank you so much, Maybell. Anything else that you would like our listeners to know about calligraphy and the gift of calligraphy? Oh, so the gift of calligraphy is, um, it's been a long dream of mine to write and I dedicated it to my kids. Um, just as a reminder, you know, to spread, you know, you can use calligraphy to spread love and kindness in unexpected places. I love it. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much, Kimberly. So you can find Maybell at may-bell.com. Also, there's a link in the show notes to her beautiful book, The Gift of Calligraphy. This actually makes a wonderful holiday gift too. Or if you are interested in taking your hand, trying your hand at this process, then it's a wonderful way to get some ideas on how to do some handmade gifts, even gift wrap, things along those lines. It's just so, so beautiful. I fell in love with this book when I received it. Then also you can find her on Instagram at Maybell, M-A-Y-B-E-L-L-E-I-M-A-S-A. So Definitely recommend checking that out. I find so much inspiration over on her beautiful, beautiful Instagram page. And I'll have a few of those photos in the show notes just because they're so pretty to look at. Now, social media, of course, you can find me on Instagram. Love sharing all sorts of kind of eye candy over there. And I'm at Tranquility Du Jour. And I also do the Tranquility Eco Lux one, which is my locally sewn eco friendly vegan clothing line. You can also pen along with me. I'm on Pinterest from time to time. Of course, I'm on Facebook at Tranquility Du Jour, on Twitter at Kimberly Wilson, and then on YouTube at Tranquility Du Jour. So watch for new videos coming in 2019. Also, there's a link in the show notes to my five books, Tranquility Filled eCourses, the iPhone and Android app, and read about my passion for animals. Finally, if you have a moment to pen a review, of this podcast on iTunes or share it via social media would be most grateful. Helps others find tranquility. And then also, if you have a moment to pin a review of any of my books on Amazon or Goodreads, again, would be most grateful. I wish you a delightful, delightful week ahead. Namaste. (laughs) 